G'day and welcome to the channel once again. Today we're going to have a talk about the Brazilla Gen 4. I hear people are struggling keeping their temperatures. Now, I've worked my way up from the very first Robobrew 1. I've had every model, Robobrew 2, 3 and onto the Gen 4. I've used the 65s, the 35s. What I'm trying to say is I've had a bit of experience with them and I hope I can help you out. So you may have seen in the Kegland groups on the internet, uh, several of Kegland staff saying just ditch using the PID uh, altogether and stick with just the normal temperature controlled sort of brewing that we've been using in all the other models. Now there's nothing wrong with using the PID. I've managed to get it to work pretty consistently for me, but I do a lot of standard size batches. And by that I mean, you know, most of my batches are between five and 6%. They sit there in a range I don't use too many weird ingredients, so I can get everything to settle down quite nicely. I don't want to go on about these things too much. I want this to be a short video so people can get the answers they need. But the basic problems people are having is the elements and the temp probes down the bottom, they might have a separate thermometer, they're measuring the top of the mash, and they're going to get a difference in temperature. I mean, that's nearly inevitable in all systems. I haven't met one system anywhere, and I mean from highly professional systems uh, pro brewers use down to here. There's always differences in the mash somewhere. It could be at the side of the mash, could be the top of the mash, the bottom of the mash. That happens. But of course, we want it consistent as, as possible. And home brewers tend to want it more consistent than anyone else for some reason. They love it. <laughs> so for beginners or people that are having problems, let's turn off the PID, the PID heating for now. Let's grab one of these Bluetooth thermometers so you are measuring the mash and this thermometer is controlling the temp controller rather than the element in the bottom. Although in this system it's handy because you can see what the element's reading here and that'll come in handy later. Uh, yesterday on brew day, I recorded a whole heap of footage of me with my phone recording the screen as it went along and you know the time, the time it took to go above temperature and below temperature and if it overshoots and changing um, settings and seeing which ones work and which one doesn't work, uh, which ones make it quicker, which ones it makes it slower but that will be a very, very long video. So I'm gonna try and condense it here. Uh, if there's requests for it, request down below, I can release like the whole lot. It's probably half an hour worth of footage of me, you know, each time it went in between heating cycles. Uh, I was trying to record each heating cycle. I missed a couple, but I must have got at least six, seven, eight heating cycles and what happened when I was changing the different settings. And it's all a bit wobbly. So I'm gonna take a little bit of footage now just to show you the settings on a nice, you know, steady camera, and then we'll go in and I'll sit down and we'll talk about uh, what settings work for me and we can see if they can work for you too. Keep those temperatures consistent. I guess first, if you haven't used the Bluetooth thermometer before, you need to turn the Bluetooth thermometer on, of course. Holding the button down is on and we'll chuck that in there in the water. You don't have to look at the Bluetooth thermometer anymore. We'll leave that out of the picture. So make sure your Bluetooth controller is turned on Go down to Bluetooth. Bluetooth isn't currently enabled. Okay, so we go back into settings, down to Bluetooth enabled. Now Bluetooth is on in the system. So we go back into Bluetooth. It's saying it still isn't enabled. I'm just gonna restart the system. enabled now. It's saying unbonded, that's reading my Bluetooth thermometer. So we just have to click on it, bond the device, just click enter again, and now we're bonded. That doesn't mean the system is using it yet. So we go backwards, back into the main settings, up here, temperature sensor, it's saying it's using the built-in, press enter, and we'll switch it to the wrapped Bluetooth thermometer. And right now here we can see my Bluetooth temper controller is saying, oh, it's, everything's turning on, hang on. <laughs> but it's saying 
it's 17.5 and the bottom saying 19, but the elements have come on. So I'll just turn them off for now. But you'll find, because I've just thrown that in now, eventually, you know, they'll even out. If not, you might have to calibrate the unit. That's another video. That's slowly getting a little bit warmer there because the elements were on for, a, you know, 15 seconds or whatever it was. So that's why it's showing that the bottom's heating up and not so much right next to where my Bluetooth temperature probe is. So just so you can see them clearly, I'll show you here, then we'll switch over to some of my footage and I'll show you what I change things to. Let's go back into the settings. So the first thing we can look at is that the PID heating is switched off. And it is here, so we're not using the PID at all. Just the Bluetooth thermometer in conjunction with the thermometer at the bottom of the vessel. Then we can scroll down till we find the heating hysteresis. The heating hysteresis is simply if we've set the mash temperature to 65 degrees and the heating hysteresis is 0.3 degrees. As the mash cools, once it gets to 0.3 degrees under 65 or 64.7 degrees Celsius, that's when the elements will kick on and try and get us back up to our desired mash temp. Keep in mind, I think the default setting is 0.5 degrees. I lowered it to 0.3 degrees to keep closer to my mash temp, but I wouldn't go much lower than 0.3. And some people would consider even me putting it to 0.3 as being too low. You need to remember we're dealing with a lot of water and grain and trying to keep it within say 0.1 degree either side of your mash temp would be a monumental task. So the next setting we're moving on to is the allowed sensor differential. And simply, that's the difference in temperature between the installed bottom probe next to the elements and your Bluetooth thermometer up the top of the mash. Why does this matter? It can be used as a safety device. So if your Bluetooth probe does happen to leave the mash, the bottom probe will take over. Or another example would be if you have your mash set at 65 degrees, but your Bluetooth probe is reading 64.9 and is still in a heating cycle. So it's trying to heat up down the bottom, but it gets so hot down the bottom that it hits that two degrees hotter up to about that 67 degree mark. It will take over and shut off the elements. So you can see how that could be used as a, a backup sort of safety device. And it can be really handy when you're trying to mash. So if you lower that right down, as you're trying to keep a consistent mash temperature, you're not going to overshoot down the bottom too much. It's going to stay within a couple of degrees of your mash temperature. But it can become a problem when you're trying to reach mash out. If it's only set to two degrees, the elements are heating up down the bottom and you're recirculating trying to heat up that large mash, but down the bottom gets hot quickly. So it shuts off. And so that slows everything down. So yesterday when I was mashing out, I set that to six degrees and that stopped the element shutting off too soon. And it was a much nicer, quicker trip into mash out. Now they're the two main back of house settings. The other settings we have to play with that most people are more probably familiar with uh, is the element power and the speed of the pump or your flow. For any of these to work, you need to keep a consistent, nice, steady flow. Whether that means using rice hulls or getting your milling correct, a good flow is essential. Otherwise, you'll struggle to keep temp and you'll struggle to make temperature changes. When it comes to flow, I control that by the valve on the recirc arm. Though, of course, you can use the pump percentage. I've tried to put that as simply as possible, but uh, we'll dive in and I'll show you a couple of examples of what happened yesterday when I was mucking around with the settings. Okay, here we go. Now, the settings I had here, I think are default settings, which was 0.5 hysteresis. I think I call it hysteresis in the video. I've heard it called both names, but the proper English term is hysteresis. And the temperature differential is set at three degrees, which I think is the default setting. The only thing I've done is lowered the heating percentage to 75%, so it's at 1800 watts. I was hoping that was gonna stop the overshoot. But since the hysteresis was set at 0.5 and the temperature set at 67.1, there as it gets to 66.6, .6, the heating comes on, you can see the flame in the corner. So we start heating and you'll see the built-in, of course, start to rise first and the inbuilt will continue to drop for a while because it takes a while for things to catch up. 
Now this is very important too. When you're mashing, you're better off overshooting your points than undershooting. If that undershoots all the time, you're going to break down all your longer chain sugars that keeps your body that you get from mashing higher. So you're much better overshooting a little bit more than you are going under your temperature all the time. So it's a, it's a balancing act. But you see here down the bottom, it's heating up quite quickly. There's not much dead space in the bottom of the Brazilla. And unless you've got a full flow, things will heat up down the bottom pretty fast. At 70.1, as soon as we went over there, the differential override kicked in. So the elements have kicked off, even though we're only at 66.3. So we know we're near our mash temp of 67.1. But because the elements down the bottom got hotter, the elements have cut off. And you'll see they'll keep rising from that residual heat in the elements. Goes up and up. And meanwhile, our mash is dropping because there's no, there's a little bit of hot work down the bottom, but not much. Now, as soon as the cold wort from the mash tun starts draining through and affecting the probe, cooling down the probe again and cooling down the elements, you'll notice the built-in start going down. But the mash one, depending on your settings, should start going up. See, the mash one's going up. And we've, that's our actual set temp. And the built-in's slowly going down again from the colder wort. And once it gets to our mash temp, the Bluetooth thermometer takes over again. But see, now we're overshooting. Because we got so hot down the bottom, it's bringing up that hot work to the top, and it's finally got to our Bluetooth temperature sensor, and it's overshooting. It'll overshoot, depending on your settings, quite a fair bit. You might go two or three degrees over. As I said, going over is better than going under, but you still don't want to go over too much, of course. So we're up at 69. We're nearly two degrees hotter than what we're set at. And so I've dropped the heating percentage down again before I changed anything else. And I still have that problem. So we'll skip to the next video where I started playing with the settings a bit more aggressively. I'm going to really push some of these settings. Hysteresis. I've got my hysteresis down to 0.3. Allowed a sensor difference to two. I'm going to actually change that again and lower it again. Let's go to to one. Now this will be really bad if I'm trying to step mash or jump, even go into mash out. It will take a long time because it, the bottom sensor can't get any hotter than the top sensor by one degree before uh, it takes over. But during the mash where you're trying to keep a temperature stable, that might be a good thing. We're at 67, which is where we want to be. We are at 67.1. I might knock that back to where it's supposed to be, so it just makes it a little bit easier to understand. So our set temp is 67. Our 0.3 difference we set. So the heating's not going to come on until it gets to 66.7. Hopefully, it's going to take too long. Everything's evening out. The longer you get in the mash, the more you think, you know, temperatures even out. But there's movement. While you've got movement, you're going through tubes like that, it's going to cool down. That's just what happens. You've got heat leaving the top, even though we've got the lid on, there's still a little bit of heat drop. Oh, well, there we go, 67. We're settling in here. The bottom still is at 67.6 from the last heating cycle. So 
so we're just settling in nice we it's hard to display uh you know, these examples once you know <laughs> once everything settles in because you know you won't change much they were actually creeping now we went down a bit but, you know the bottom's 67.6 .6, so we're not going to go over that and that should actually start dropping down because there's no heat down there it's only the residual heat of the element keeping that warm uh, I'm think I'll turn this camera off until you know we start you see if I see it dropping down again because it looks like we're uh, we've hit that sweet spot and a lot of this clicking, I've actually got two Brusillas on. I've got my HRT over there, so some of that is actually coming from there rather than this one. This a lot of all that clicking, most of that's coming from the big unit. Uh, so yeah, I'll turn this off, and if we drop back down, I'll try and catch it. So with the 0 0.3 hysteresis and the one degree temperature differential, I was really starting to hit my numbers. I was overshooting a little bit still, so I thought I'd keep dropping the heat percentage down to see if I could stop that overshoot. But that's when I hit another problem. While it rained in the overshoot, it was allowing the mash temperature to drop down too far before it started heating again. So this is where it's the toss up between if you want it to drop down a little bit lower because it's going to be a little bit slower to, for the heating to kick off or how high you want to go. As I say, staying a little bit higher is better. How many times I've said that? Rather than dropping lower. As the override has kicked it, turned it off. Now the 68's dropping. See how we've gone down to 66.3 though? A little bit longer. It's just because it's, you know, it's not quite as much heat coming up quite as fast. But see, we're taking longer to get to the 66.7. Usually we would get into that pretty fast. So we're evened out again. See, but I'm and go and now we're starting to go down. Now, see that's okay, but we we went that little bit closer to 65. So I'm actually I'm finishing my testing here because I'd rather stay. I'd rather put that back up to 55 and be that little bit more than 67, like closer to 68, than be under to keep the body in the beer. But that's how you can play with it and really tune it in. All right, so we've been going for, what time does it say? They could have passed three, about 75 minutes at least now. So I'm going to get in, go into mash out. Now this, these controls here would make trying to get to mash out a nightmare. Because every time it's going to get like down the bottom one degree or two degrees hotter than the 67, it's, the element's going to cut out. And it's just going to keep going on. It'll eventually get there probably, but it's going to take a long time. So before I go into mash out, what I'm going to do, of course, is go back into the settings. The allowed uh, temperature differential, I'm going to put that up to, oops. I'm going to raise it up to five. We're going up, right? It doesn't matter. Could even be more. Six, it's, six will do. We stopped at six. The heating hysteresis, I'm not worried about it. We can stay there, that's all right. Back, uh, and we're going to put that heat back up. 100 will be fine. And the setting temp, of course, because I'm going into mash out. I'll put that up to 76. There we go, we're heating. Uh, oh, what I should have shown too is the pump, how the pump's been going through that whole thing. Because the flow is as important as anything else. And not have to worry. See that flow? If you haven't got a good flow, then yeah, you're going to have struggle get cha temperature changing and keeping temperature, of course. That's the flow I had on this. Ah, it's hot. Fair bit of flow. Also keep in mind that that was near the edge. If that temperature controller had been closer to the 
uh, tubing, you know, the, the temperature changes would have probably been even more accurate and quicker. Now you can see it's pointing there, but it's because I'm pushing it out of the way with the lid. Now your settings might not be exactly the same, but I'll hopefully I've at least shown you how you can check it and how you can rein it in and hopefully get some consistent temperatures for yourself. Thanks very much. I hope this has helped. Like, subscribe, share if you like the video. A massive shout out to my patrons. Without them, this couldn't happen. Please consider becoming a patron. It keeps me going. Thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.